One New Year's Eve, people were running around trying to make it somewhere. The stingy old grumpy man, Mr. Scrooge, was looking out the window from his workplace. What nonsense! All these people running around in the cold. I hate New Year's Eve. Mr. Scrooge sat at his table and began to check the list of all the people that owed him money. With hesitation, his helper approached him and asked, "Is it possible that I leave a little early today? You know it's New Year's Eve, and I must buy my son a present." No, you may not, Mister. Present? How ridiculous! And why leave it to the last day? You should have bought it earlier. With great sadness, his helper returned to work. At that very moment, the door knocked. As grumpy as himself, his dog barked at the door. <coughs> Mr. Scrooge's helper opened the door. His young nephew had come to visit him. He invited him over to the New Year's dinner. But because Mr. Scrooge didn't like New Year's, and he thought that the celebrations were nonsense, once again, like always, he refused to go. After his nephew had left, his door knocked again. Oh, what now? Leave me alone so I can work. This time, two men entered. And asked if it was possible for him to donate some money to the orphans. Mr. Scrooge refused to give them money. Go on now, go, go to another door. I have no money to throw on the streets. With great sadness, the men walked out. Later that evening, Mr. Scrooge went home, wore his pajamas, and sat on his couch. And right that moment. Some strange things began to happen. Windows and doors began to swing. There were howling noises coming from the door, and scary sounds all around. The dog began to bark once again. At first, Mr. Scrooge didn't take any notice of this, but then all of a sudden, a ghost appeared right in front of him. Mr. Scrooge had never been so frightened in his whole entire life. The ghost was his friend from work, who had just passed away. With great difficulty, Mister Scrooge spoke. You, you! But how can it be? You died. Go, get away from me. Leave me alone. I, I haven't done anything wrong. The ghost's hands and feet were in shackles. He told Mister Scrooge. Due to his selfishness and greediness, he was punished, and that his punishment was to walk around the world in shackles. And so he warned Mr. Scrooge not to make the same mistake he did. You go and mind your own business. You're dead. There you have it. Okay then. Just wanted to warn you. Three other ghosts will visit you. One of them will show you your past. The other, your presence, and the last one will show you your future life. Mr. Scrooge acted as if none of this had happened and head off to bed. Soon after, a light caught his eye. When Mr. Scrooge opened his eyes, a child ghost appeared. It was the ghost from last year's New Year's Eve. Mr. Scrooge was stunned. Hi. Now we will take a little trip to the past. Oh, what's happening? Help! The ghost took Mr. Scrooge back to his childhood years, and there it was, Mr. Scrooge as a child, with his friends in the schoolyard. Decorating the tree like a Christmas tree, the kids were having so much fun. You could tell Child Mr. Scrooge was very happy.、Uh. Later on, the ghost took him to his first boss's house when he was a young man. They were having great time with his boss and his family. 
Mr. Scrooge's wife was also there. Together they were dancing and having so much fun. And at last, the ghost took Mr. Scrooge back to another New Year's Eve, which was in the past, but later on in his life. His wife began to cry. Before we used to have so much fun. You used to care for me and love me, but now all you love is money. I have no room in your life anymore. I think we should part. Not being able to stand the sight of this, Mr. Scrooge asked the ghost to take him back. And suddenly he was home. This time round, a giant green-coloured ghost appeared in front of him. Now Mr. Scrooge was even more scared. It was this year's New Year's ghost. Come with me. Let's see what's happening this New Year's Eve. Before he had any time to refuse, he found himself in his helper's home. In his poor helper's home was a very simple dinner table. Mr. Scrooge thought that everyone in the family hated him. Then he saw that this actually wasn't the case. His helper stood up and started to talk. I want to thank Mrs. Scrooge for giving me the opportunity to work and for paying me on time. We are able to eat because of him. Even though Mr. Scrooge was nasty to his helper, at every chance he got, he was amazed at how thankful he was. Later he noticed his helper's sick child. The kid was sitting in his wheelchair at the top corner of the table. He looked thin and sick. Mr. Scrooge was very sad for the child. This child is very ill and hasn't got much time left. After hearing this, Mr. Scrooge's sadness grew bigger. Later on, the ghost took him to his nephew's home. All his family was having so much fun eating. They even had an empty seat waiting for him. Wish Uncle was here with us. Mr. Scrooge did not expect to see this. He always thought that his whole family had hated him. At that moment, the ghost told him that it was time for him to die and revealed two kids standing under his jacket. It was a girl and a boy. But with their skinny figures and scary faces, they looked more like two old skeletons than kids. Attention to these kids. They represent greedy and unconcerned people. When it is time for you to die, pay special attention to the boy. The giant green ghost also disappeared. Mr. Scrooge did not quite understand what the ghost was trying to say. But suddenly, he startled with the sound of the clock. It was midnight. This time, there appeared a darker and scarier ghost in front of him. This one was the ghost of the future. He brought Mr. Scrooge to his own funeral. People were gathered at his grave in a graveyard. Mr. Scrooge was shocked when he saw his face on his gravestone. He saw that people were talking behind his back and how they were relieved that he was finally gone. That moment, Mr. Scrooge realised that over the years, he had become an even worse person and nobody liked him anymore. People who owed him money were happy with his death. And he saw his helper's son's grave. Unlike his, his son's grave was full of flowers. He could not stand to see it anymore. He asked the ghost to take him back. Please take me back. Now I understand. I'm going to change the way I live. I'm not going to be that stingy old grumpy man. I promise you. Suddenly he was home. Luckily the time wasn't 12 yet. His dog began to bark. Mr. Scrooge noticed it was still that same day. 
he still had time to change some things. With great happiness, he jumped out onto the street. First, he visited the butcher. He bought a big turkey and asked if he could take it to his helper's home. Then he bought a toy and asked if they could take it to his helper's son. Then he ran and went to his brother's house. He joined the dinner his nephew had invited him to. That night, they all had a great New Year's Eve together. Later on, he made sure his helper's son got the treatment he needed. He treated him as if he was his own son. He helped the poor. He got along with people better and treated them with warmth. He was never rude, selfish or stingy. And nothing was ever going to be the same. It was New Year's Eve and it was snowing. Stahlbaum family's home was decorated beautifully with colourful, shimmery ornaments and a big Christmas tree with its flashing lights. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Clara, the youngest girl in the family, went to the door and opened it with joy. With his arms full of presents, in came Uncle Drosselmeyer. When Clara saw her favourite uncle with all these presents, she was very excited. Clara had no patience whatsoever to wait until midnight. She wanted to have her present that moment. Uncle Drosselmeyer could not let Clara down, and so he gave her present. Very excited, Clara opened her present. This was the most interesting present she ever had got. Her uncle's present was a funny-faced nutcracker with a red nose and a thin moustache. Clara never had a toy like this before. She really loved this toy nutcracker. She started playing with it and she even danced. Clara's naughty brother Fritz, on the other hand, did not like his present and so he threw it away. He liked Clara's nutcracker more, so he tried to take it from her. I want this! No, Fritz, this is mine! At last, he managed to take the nutcracker from Clara's hand and went upstairs. Hey, Fritz! Hurry up and give my toy back! You go and play with your own toy! I never liked that mouse. This should be mine. Fritz, please don't! Give back my nutcracker! Here you are! <laughs> and what does Clara see as she approaches to get the nutcracker? The arm of the toy was broken right there on the ground. Clara got very upset and began to cry. Don't worry, Clara. I'll fix that for you. It was past midnight. The New Year celebrations were over. And just like all the other kids, Clara was tired. And so she lied down. But she couldn't stop thinking about her nutcracker toy. I hope Uncle was able to fix the nutcracker. With all the overwhelming curiosity, Clara jumped out of bed. And with one hope, she entered the living room. And there it was, the nutcracker in one piece sitting under the Christmas tree. Clara was so happy, she hugged the nutcracker and in peace she fell asleep. Not long after, in her sleep, Clara heard some funny noises. And slowly as she opened her eyes, she thought she was dreaming and she drifted off again. Not knowing at that very moment she had started her journey to Neverland. The noises began once again, as if it were the mice making all that noise. Clara opened her eyes once again. The furniture in the house seemed to be much bigger now. 
The Christmas tree where she was sleeping turned into a gigantic tree. Clara was wide awake now, and right at that moment, she noticed that in fact nothing was actually growing, but instead she was shrinking. And just then she noticed the Mouse King and his army were heading her way. She was very scared and wanted to run away, but the giant mice managed to stop her. They began to surround her and slowly started to close in towards her. At that point, the Nutcracker had also come alive. Why are you standing there, Clara? We can't climb up that tree and get away. Clara and the Nutcracker managed to climb the tree and from there jumped up to the upper floor. Where are we going to run away to? This is your home. You must know somewhere where the mice can't find you. I'm going to call for help. As Clara was running, Nutcracker was nowhere to be seen. The mice had scattered all around the house. They were looking for Clara. The Nutcracker had approached a toy store. He saw that there were many tin soldiers sitting in the window. He grabbed a rock and broke the window. Hey, what are you guys doing just standing there? Run! My friend Clara is in trouble. Mouse King and his army are going to catch her. All of a sudden, the tin soldiers had all come alive. They all jumped out of the broken window and followed the Nutcracker. Once the Nutcracker arrived back at the house, it looked like a war scene. The mice had turned the place upside down. The Nutcracker and his soldiers pulled out their swords and began to fight Mouse King and his army. Unfortunately, there were more mice than the tin soldiers. Most of the tin soldiers were wounded. The Nutcracker was in bad shape himself. He was wounded in several areas. Clara got out of where she was hiding. She knew she had to do something. But as small as she was, she knew that this was impossible. Mouse King approached the Nutcracker and drew his sword towards his face. With great panic, Clara yelled and threw her shoe at the Mouse King. Ew! There you dirty mouse! The shoe flew and it hit Mouse King's head. Unconsciously, the Mouse King dropped to the ground. Seeing their king drop to the ground, the mice accepted the fact that they had lost. And so they carried their king out of the living room and left. Clara ran to the Nutcracker. He was unconsciously laying on the floor. Clara kneeled down to the Nutcracker and began to cry. <laughs> Nutcracker, wake up! Suddenly, a fairy appeared behind Clara. With her blue outfits, wings and her lollipop wand, she was an extremely sweet fairy. The fairy couldn't stand the sight of Clara's tears and so she used her magic. And right at that moment, the Nutcracker transformed into a handsome prince. <gasps> With amazement and happiness, Clara found herself looking at the prince. The handsome prince reached out his hands and they began to dance. This was a magical dance. Clara noticed that at that point she began to float in the air. And again, amongst the fairy dust appeared the candy fairy. This time round, there were other fairies amongst her. The fairies flew Clara and Prince Nutcracker to Candyland. Trees made out of candy, jelly bean flowers, pink butterflies, golden coloured toffee apples. It was such an enchanting place. Clara began to tell her story and all that had happened. I know everything that's happened. Don't worry, Clara. You are safe with us. 
Soon later, a peaceful sound of a flute surrounded the atmosphere. And so fairies and colourful flowers began to dance. Short while later, the Nutcracker and Clara joined the dance. All around you could see dancing colourful trees, lollipops and candy. Clara and the Nutcracker Prince suddenly realised that they were on stage. After the unique sound of the flute had ended, Clara looked around. She was on stage. The audience in front of her was applauding. Clara bowed to the audience. With happiness, she closed her eyes. Clara? Clara? Right at that moment, with the sound of her mother's voice, she opened her eyes. She rubbed her eyes and looked around. Later, noticed the Nutcracker toy was on her lap. With great confusion, her mother was staring at her. Little did she know, Clara was also lost in confusion. Darling, did you sleep here all night? Mother, I... I... But everything seems so real! With the happy thought of returning back to her dream, Clara closed her eyes. We got into a drifted bed. 